Hi friends, this video demonstrates our technique of performing a laparoscopic appendectomy for a patient with acute appendicitis. The appendix was retrocycled in position. Here you could see we are not able to identify the appendix clearly. So whenever there is a retrocycled position, what we would generally do is mobilize the cecum a bit so that we can rotate the cecum and see the appendix more clearly. So whenever we are doing the mobilization, we have to be wary of the right ureter. So here you can see the ureter which is clearly present and the peristalsis also will be appreciated shortly. So now we know for sure that the ureter is present at this level and we should always keep it in mind. You could see even with the magnification of laparoscopy, it's only a couple of centimeters away from the area of dissection. The other key is the traction. When you give a very good traction, the moment you incise the peritoneum, you can see the carbon dioxide is nicely opening up the planes and showing us the exact area where we should be dissecting. So now you can see we're just able to dissect it in a sharp manner with just a simple monopolar cautery. You do not need any sophisticated instruments for these kind of dissections. So once again, because we are coming a little more inferior, we identify the ureter, the exact codes where it runs and then we use the cautery in a short burst. So here you can see again when we use the short burst of cautery, automatically the carbon dioxide is opening up and guiding us in the direction which we have to further dissect and travel. So you can see the nice plane which is completely avascular and you can easily open up this plane with a good traction counter traction. So here you could see now the appendix is slowly coming into our vision and you can see it's all pretty much only after opening the lateral attachment of the peritoneum and the retroperitoneum are we able to appreciate the exact location of the appendix. So this is very crucial whenever we have a retrocecal appendix or an appendix which is almost extending up to the subapatic region. So here we are just using a cautery and you can see now the fold is gradually being incised a little more and you can already see we have come pretty much very close to the liver. So based on the exact location of the tip of the appendix we might have to dissect to the adequate level. So this is something like a subhepatic only but the length is not exactly up to the liver it stops just short of it. So here you can see we are just using cautery and trying to identify the exact plane and whatever little facial attachments are present which are not conventional those are divided and we are just dissecting so that the appendix can be visualized all around. So now we are getting an idea where the tubular structure runs and this is going to be helpful for us to further dissect. So here you can see all the small thin facial attachments which were is present when a good traction and counter traction is given. It automatically opens up the plane and we are able to identify all of it easily. Whenever there is a small amount of ooze which is happening we can again use a short burst of monopolar and that would generally take care of the oozers. So now we are able to appreciate the entire length of the appendix. Here you can see some small attachments still tethering the appendix close to the base which we will have to take care of if we need to dissect further. So now we are just trying to identify the exact location where we have to incise because here we have to be wary of the small bubble which is coming in namely the terminal ileum which will go and get joined with the cecum near the IC junction. So now once we have identified the exact location then it's much much easier. So here you can see we're doing a, just a little more dissection so that again we can rotate off the cecum and the appendix very clearly from the retroperitoneal structures so that dissection becomes a little more easier and we can do it all under clear vision. So now we just identify the cecum and we see that's the way the appendix is traversing. So here there are some small facial attachments which were covering the appendix. So we have to incise these attachments so that the appendix and the meso appendix is exposed. Only when they are exposed then we can do the appendicectomy comfortably. So here you can see when we didn't identify the cecum this whole peritoneal attachment will look similar to the cecum. So sometimes we should not mistake it for the cecum at the same time we have to be wary that the cecum is very close. So we have to keep 
identifying the cecum and use it as a landmark and guide for us to carry our dissection and in what line we want to carry the dissection as well. So here you can see gradually small bit by bit all those tissues are being taken down with the monopolar cautery and we are progressing further. So now you can see this thin facial attachments over the anti-mesenteric border of the appendix which is just coagulated. You can see immediately all the attachments when it's released the appendix becomes bare similar to the structure which we are all familiar with. But we do not have this good vision in the initial phases of our dissection and only after exposing it well are we able to identify and appreciate the structures well. So here you can see those thin attachments are identified, we are just holding it so that we are just trying to dissect between those facial attachments and the appendix trying to open up a window where only the meso appendix and the appendix are left behind and we do not have any more further additions. So here we are just using short bursts of cautery and since there is a little bit of fogging we will just clear the camera a bit so that the vision is much better. So now you can appreciate the vision has got a lot better and here you can see with a combination of blunt and sharp dissection we are able to identify the exact direction in which we have to keep dissecting. So now you can see we are working well between the facial attachments which were there and the appendix. So now you can see still a little portion of the attachments are left behind and these are taken down in a sharp manner by using a monopolar energy. So here you can see there's a little bit of fat and there might be some small vessels running through them. So again we use a little bit of cautery and use the dissection in a sharp manner rather than a blunt fashion. So further we are just carrying our dissection bit by bit and releasing all the attachments present over here. Once we release all these attachments, we have to do it all around. Only if we do it all around, then we can appreciate the structure well. So now you can see roughly the tip of the appendix is coming into our dissection field. And we have to just grasp it a little more distally and give a nice adequate traction so that the tip can be appreciated very well. So once again, whenever there is a fibrotic strand, we use a short burst of cautery and then a combination of blunt dissection to open up these planes in a meticulous manner. So now you can start to appreciate the area of the cecum. So we have to keep that in mind and keep dissecting and appreciating it so that we do not cause any inadvertent injury to the cecum. So now you can see further blunt and sharp dissection are used in a combination so that the attachments and additions which are present there can be easily taken down. So the, now the appendix is quite bare on one side and you can see the structures very well and now you can start to appreciate the tip of the appendix also better. Once again we try to identify the location of the cecum. Even though that's a little bit of fat we have to be wary that the posterior surface and the lateral surface of the cecum would be much more lateral compared to the area which we are identifying. So now you could see we demonstrated a small gap between both the structures so that means we have a good safety margin where we can do our dissection without much of a concern of thermal injury to the cecum. So here once again we are just using the cautery and we are going to dissect off all those attachments. So now you can see the translucency of the opposite side also coming into our vision very clearly that means we do not have any major structures and we can just easily coagulate them we do not have to be too concerned about causing any injury or a lot of bleeders from this area so small bit by bit here we will just try to carry our dissection and identify the right plane so that we can move further and operate in the clear field 
So here you can see when the traction is applied a little more sternversely, you can see all these small thin attachments which are present and we have to be wary that the meso appendix also will start to come in this plane and we will have those vessels running behind. So here we're just trying to dissect and identify the exact location if we are able to identify any vessels. So now you can see that there are small vessels and branches which are coming into our field of dissection. So here it's just a simple fibrotic strand which we can divide. Below that you can see the small vessel very clearly and even above you can see some small losers from the smaller portion of the branches. So these vessels can be taken with just a bipolar itself. Here just to speed up the process we are using a ligature. So that is up to one's own comfort. It's not mandatory that you should have a ligature for you to keep dissecting. So here you can see all those vessels clearly and we are just coagulating it a couple of times and then just dissecting it off so that we do not have to be worried about that vessel again. So now you can see we are just twisting the appendix back to this side and trying to identify where exactly the attachments are located. So now you can see we are just pulling off the meso appendix away from the appendix and trying to isolate the appendix as much as possible. So the idea of trying to isolate the appendix is so that the size of the appendix will be pretty small and it can be easily brought out through a tenement port along with the endoloop which we apply distally. If we leave too much of a meso then it becomes a difficulty in trying to remove the appendix completely and that would hamper our dissection as well. So once again we make sure the cecum is clearly identified so that the amount of dissection we have to do at the level of the base of the appendix can be identified and done in a meticulous manner. We do not want to progress too much beyond. So here you can see the terminal small bowel which is present very close and we identify the exact location of that so that we do not use any inadvertent cautery in that area. No matter what the energy source when the bowel is close by if we use it then there is always a higher potential of thermal damage occurring to that luminal structure. So now you can see here once we turn and flip the appendix there are still some more additions which are present and these can be easily taken down again with the energy source. You can see there is not much of major vessels over here they are all quite flimsy and we can work around it. So now you can see a vessel once again branching from the appendicular branch of the iliacolic artery. So all these small branches can be easily cauterized by using these energy sources or a bipolar if one has having only a conventional bipolar. But I would refrain from using monopolar too much at the level of the base of the appendix. So here again we are just trying to take small thin brands because we have come very close to the base. We do not want to just casually use any form of energy source. So here we are just taking small bit by bit. You can see the anterior leaf of the peritoneum and the posterior leaf of the peritoneum being dissected in a separate manner so that we have a better, better control over the tissues which we are trying to coagulate. So here once again you can see the small attachments which is present are being taken down. So laterally also you just flip the camera and see what other structures are there. This when it's away from the cecum not much of a concern so now you can see a nice window as well. So we just use the cartery and do a nice adhesiolysis all around so that the appendix would be totally free and we can just apply an endo loop at this area without much of a concern at all. So now you can see the appendix and the coning of the cecum which is starting to happen. So here once again we try to identify the wall where the cecum is present. Hold the tissues, pull it away from the wall and only then use a little bit of energy. And definitely only a sophisticated energy or a bipolar, no monopolar at this level. So now we have pretty much come to the base of the dissection. You can see it seems like there is still some more distance. But when you change the direction you can see the nice triangulation and you can see how supple that tissue is. So that is the cecum and we do not want to be dissecting there. You can also start to appreciate the tinea well. So now we will just milk at the base of the appendix so that if at all any fecolith is present it will just be pushed up into the distal portion of the appendicular body. So after that milking process is done then we have to identify the exact location. So now you can see the tinea very clearly. So that is one tinea on the lateral aspect. That's the tinea. So 
here you can see the tinea on the middle and the third one is a little more medial so here we just trying to hold with the instrument you can see that is supple we want a nice firm area where we are going to find and that is the area which we will regard as the base and put the endo loop because when you apply too much of traction even the cecum will be pulled up a bit even below the endo loop you can see it seems like there is a little bit of appendix but actually after applying we will be showing it to you you can actually appreciate it's basically the cecum over that so we do not want to be applying any endo loop on the cecal wall that will lead to a cecal fistula at a later time and make a simple operation more morbid see here we are just trying to palpate this area is quite firm so that is the base of the appendix whereas just above it you can see it's totally supple we always like to apply two endo loops proximally at a distance of 5 mm between one endo loop and the other and after both the endo loops are applied once again we milk the appendix and put the third endo loop distally this is just to avoid any spillage of the fecolith whenever a fecolith spills then it causes a lot of paralytic ileus for the patient so we just don't want to avoid avoid that and not have that issue at all so that is why we just have a distal loop that is up to your personal preference so again we use a little bit of betadine soaked gauze and chemically cauterize it now we are just doing a examination of the small bubble by doing a bubble walk to make sure that there are no Meckel's diverticulum we change the camera to a 5 mm and use a cloth forceps and remove the specimen through the 10 mm port and whenever we remove we have to make sure that the appendix does not touch the skin it goes inside thank you very much